Hello and welcome. I'm Scott Fleischman, joined by Gifford CMO, Dr. Josh White. It's been a couple of weeks since we last addressed your concerns, so we thought we'd get back on here and talk about some of the things going on, some of the concerns that you may have, especially with students going back to school here in Vermont. Dr. White, should there be some concern for parents sending their kids back to school with the Delta variant right now making its way through the population? Uh, thanks for the conversation, Scott. Um, I'm happy to try to help and, and clarify things. Um, there is certainly cause for concern with kids going back to school. This is a respiratory virus and bringing people together is a, a means by which this spreads and uh, uh, children under the age of 12 don't have the opportunity to get vaccinated yet. So we have a, a pretty significant pool of individuals that can move Delta around. Um, the, the individual concern for any child is quite low. Children tend to have significantly lower impact not zero, mind you, but lower um, uh, from COVID. Um, but uh, um, it's something that a reasonable parent should at least be thinking about. While we are, while you're watching us here, we encourage you to go subscribe to our YouTube page. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down below and give the video a like. We're going to be posting many of the videos like this on our. Gifford YouTube page. Dr. White, um, we've been talking about booster shots as well. And it looks like now things are, we're learning a little bit more about the science when these booster shots will come into play for the general population. Yes. So uh, there's a few things to consider here. Um, data is showing that the antibody titers that people have uh, start to drop off at about eight months or so. Um, after the mRNA vaccines, so that's Pfizer and Moderna. The data is a little bit uncertain yet for Johnson & Johnson. I know they're researching it, so it's coming. That base will get covered. Um, uh, there is a presumption that at some point in time with dropping antibodies, a person may be at higher risk from COVID. Um, that being said, there is not clinical data at this point that suggests it's a concern. We are not seeing... Um, you know, vaccinated individuals having higher rates of hospitalization or death at some point after vaccine is vaccination. So this is a lab test, not a clinical outcome. Um, for that reason, uh, um, the, there shouldn't be a, a panic or a rush to get a booster. Um, I think they're all coming for all of us. I think it is, is wise to consider and we wanna stay as protected as we can um, for obvious reasons, um, but, there's no real data suggesting that you're at increased risk suddenly at eight months, even if uh, uh, you had the Pfizer or Moderna. The FDA approved the Pfizer vaccine for ages 12 and up. Is that an important milestone? It is important. Um, it, it should demonstrate to people that the, the full process has, has taken course and, and that requires mountains of data. Um, and careful consideration. Um, I don't think it's gonna translate into big bumps in vaccination. Um, uh, it certainly will pr prompt some people to get their vaccines. Um, but if you were holding out uh, um, as a vaccine skeptic um, based on FDA approval um, and, and you weren't living under a rock, um, you, you should be aware now that hundreds of millions of Americans and um, billions of people globally have now been vaccinated without any major negative outcomes um, uh, to this point, uh, such that an FDA statement is probably not going to push big numbers of people. One of the reasons why there is a lot of concern is because children 12 and under uh, are unprotected right now. And that's obviously the concern going into the school year. It's the reasons why a lot of us are wearing masks, masks again, indoors, even if we're vaccinated. All these precautions really to protect children until we can see the vaccines for those kids 12 and under. Any update on the progress of those vaccines? There, uh, 
So as to when they're going to be approved, um, it's harder to get data on children. It's harder to do studies on children. It requires a lot more careful consideration for obvious reasons. Um, now that is being done. Uh, the last statement that I saw from an FDA official um, uh, predicted uh, sometime this winter. Um, so not necessarily soon. Um, it is possible that we would see an emergency youth author authorization request prior to that. Um, uh, but I doubt it, um, with a lower impact on kids, um, I'm guessing it's going to be a few months, uh, before we see that. Um, and I don't love that situation myself. Um, I have an 11 year old son, um, and would love to see him vaccinated. Um, at the same time, I want to, I want to see them go through the process correctly. Um, I want to see things done right. Um, and so in the meantime, we are left with things like masks and social distancing. Um, I think the, uh, um, a lot of the angst that people are feeling now about kids and their return to school um, is, is a reflection of fatigue. Um, we went through last year and, and part of the year before that um, with school, and it's not been fun. Uh, children have missed you know, large segments of school and the the online thing is less than perfect and the, the lack of social contact is a problem for kids, but we have demonstrated it can be done even if it's not fun. Um, and we are almost certainly looking at going through it again for at least a significant period of time. What is the procedure or how is the procedure different when going through these trials and tests with vaccines in children as opposed to adults? The, it's a bigger leap to do trials in kids because of the ethical considerations. Um, so there's the, the obvious reality that a child cannot provide informed consent. Um, uh, and so you have to go through that extra step. Um, and then, of course, uh, people are reticent to do anything that might endanger a child um, uh, for obvious reasons. So for a drug company such as Pfizer, or Moderna, or Johnson & Johnson, to get those trials done um, requires, you know, more ethics boards, more careful consideration, more paperwork. Um, uh, it's just a bigger lift. And it should be. Um, we all want to protect our kids. So this is the Delta variant we're experiencing right now. As we talked the last time, you said that we did have a chance to kind of nip COVID in the bud we missed that opportunity. So now, is this kind of the new normal for now? We're going to have periods where everything's fine and then a variant will come in. We're going to go through this wave where we have to then, once again, put in all of these mandates or recommendations and then things will kind of calm down again and we'll go into one of these lulls. We just have to kind of be on our toes as we go here. Almost certainly. Um, the... Uh, it'll be a little bit different depending on where you live. Um, geographically, there are areas with significantly different vaccination rates. Um, and uh, uh, the problem is obviously much larger in areas with lower vaccination rates. And you can see that reflected in deaths and hospitalizations. Um, the, uh, uh, but it will be something that we're going to ride for a long time. Um, uh, it's not a fun roller coaster, but we don't get to get off. Um, the, the upside to this is as more people get vaccinated, um, and as the, uh, virus, uh, moves around the world, um, it's going to likely follow the pattern, uh, that previous pandemics have where these things become endemic, um, uh, pathogens, uh, uh, typically don't get more virulent and kill a lot of people uh, because when they do that, they burn themselves out um, and they don't last long. This is a big reason Ebola has had a hard time going anywhere um, because it burns itself out quickly. Um, they tend to become slowly less virulent as the population adapts. That process takes time. And obviously a lot of people uh, um, can suffer from that. There's over 600,000 Americans dead. Um, and, and certainly more coming, um, but the, the surges are going to get smaller and smaller, um, lower impact in areas with uh, uh, vaccines um, or vaccines at a high rate. And we can expect that 
that'll continue to be the case. There'll be some variations with uh, uh, different um, forms of the virus and, and we'll have to adapt as we move along. Um, we'll have to get boosters and such, uh, but it'll, uh, it'll leave us in a place where it's some number of years from now, it'll be much like influenza and uh, um, just part of the background that we have to deal with. Hospitals, medical centers like ours are um, putting restrictions back in place for visitors, for staff, like we saw uh, last year because of this Delta variant right now. If you are a patient going to have an, a procedure, you know, say a knee replacement surgery, or you're going in for some other condition where you may have to stay overnight at a hospital or medical center, should you still be concerned that you're going to be staying in an area where there are patients that could be infected with COVID? Are you, your chances of being okay, you know, still have a pretty good chance of, of not catching anything if you're coming in for uh, a, a normal procedure? Uh, that's not something I would worry about. The hospitals are actually probably some of the safest places you can be. Um, patients with COVID are kept in negative pressure rooms and, and negative pressure wards. If you're, if you're here with a, a hip replacement or a knee replacement, you're not going to be near those folks. You're going to be surrounded by medical staff that uh, practice very careful hygiene procedures and are wearing masks and eye protection and such. Um, and the, uh, um, we've seen the transmission rate of COVID uh, in the hospital uh, between patients and staff has been close to zero throughout the entire pandemic. Um, you don't, I'm not gonna say it's never happened, um, but you don't go to the hospital and get COVID. Um, now, if there were enough COVID patients and uh, hospitals had to shift resources, um, elective surgeries may shut back down again. If all the nurses are caring for COVID patients, you're not gonna get your new replacement. Um, but if they're offering it, um, I would be quite comfortable and, and hospitals by and large, at least in Vermont, are highly vaccinated. Um, uh, Gifford is uh, in the mid to high 90s uh, from our vaccination rate. Um, uh, and you've got a wall of protection around you. And speaking of walls of protection, I was in the drugstore recently. They offered me my flu shot kids going back to school. There are other diseases, illnesses that go around that aren't COVID related. So uh, one, is it safe to take a flu shot right after being vaccinated or a couple of months after you're vac vaccinated? Is it okay to get a flu shot? Will there be any side effects? And when do you know when you should test for COVID? Or maybe you just have a cold that you picked up. So getting multiple vaccinations at once is perfectly safe and actually it's common. Um, the the MMR, MMR vaccine you give to kids is measles, mumps, and rubella. Um, uh, they get three vaccinations all at once and that's standard. Um, so you certainly can get your uh, influenza vaccination surrounding other vaccinations, including COVID. Um, uh, that being said, uh, the influenza vaccine uh, does lose its efficacy um, starting at about three to four months. Uh, so I would not recommend you get your influenza vaccine now. Um, you know, it's, we're not even into September yet. And uh, uh, influenza doesn't tend to peak in Vermont until about mid-December. Uh, and so you would waste most of it um, if you were to get it now. Um, I would wait, um, but to each their own. The uh, um, I'm sorry, remind me of the second part of the question. So the second part is when do you know when you should test for COVID or maybe, you know, you might have the sniffles, you might have a sore throat, but it could just be a cold. So when do you know when to test? Uh, I would encourage people to test for COVID whenever they're concerned. Part of the uh, way that we are managing this is having a very wide safety net um, epidemiologically speaking, uh, the more data we get, the more cases that we can find, the quicker, the easier, uh, the better chance we have to stamp them out. So um, even if you're not terribly worried, come get tested. Um, uh, our program here at Gifford is uh, uh, free. You don't get charged for it. 
Um, it's uh, it's not the, the brain biopsy swab anymore. It's just in the front of your nose. So it's, it's pretty benign. It just takes a little bit of your time um, and it's a way to be safe. Um, so anytime you have any symptoms you're concerned about at all, anytime you're concerned about possible exposure, um, what we're telling our staff here is if you travel, um, uh, get tested when you come back. Um, and, and we want people to travel. We want people to see family that they haven't seen in a long time. We need people to take breaks. Healthcare uh, providers are uh, having major issues with burnout nationwide. Um, you need to go to the beach. Um, you need to go to the mountains. You need to see your cousins. But please don't bring Delta home. Get tested so that if you do, we can quarantine you and not bring it into the hospital. Um, and, and my concerns are, are not the safety of vaccinated personnel. They're, they're doing quite well, even if they get COVID. Um, uh, but if I have to quarantine too many people, uh, um, we would have to start shutting units down. And I really don't want to do that. Um, it would be a significant concern for our patients. Um, so uh, the, the last thing I would suggest that people consider uh, in terms of getting tested is if you host people in your home. Um, uh, and so if you've got out-of-state visitors that stay, um, get tested. Um, we've seen lots of cases where people are trying hard. They're trying to do the right thing. Um, lots of people are vaccinated, but maybe there's an eight-year-old in the group. Um, uh, people are trying to quarantine uh, and uh, Delta has slipped through. Um, and so here at the hospital, um, we, we don't blame people for living their lives. We want them to live their lives. We want them to just be careful and we'll pick up COVID and, and quarantine you if we have to. We just don't want to quarantine others that we don't have to. All right, we have our stop and swab here at the main Gifford campus in Randolph. You can come in and all the information will be on our website, uh, giffordhealthcare.org. And again, uh, if you want more information from Dr. White, when we have these periodic chats, subscribe to our YouTube page, like this video. If you have a question, leave it in the comment section below. We'll get to it the next time we have one of these talks because uh, we're probably going to have to have a few more of them as we go along here, because as we've known with this uh, COVID-19 pandemic, things are always changing. There's variants always coming in and always new issues seem to arise. Hopefully not too much longer. Dr. Josh White, thank you very much again for joining us. Thank you, Scott.